I say crick, you say crack. Crick, crack. This is a story. Crick, crack are old Caribbean ways of starting and ending a story, including in today's first page Friday book. A Comb of Wishes, a new book by Lisa Stringfellow. It was published by Quill Tree Books. I say crick, you say crack. Crick, crack. This is a story. Down past the islands, lit by the sun, beyond twilight swells of dusky sea, through midnight veils of the crushing abyss, another world hides under the waves the other side of the mirror, as it is known. Through these steps swam a sea woman. The full moon rose and spilled its milk into the water. The light glimmered over dark brown skin. Her scales flashed green and gold. Her boating drifted on the tide and urged her on. When she reached the cavern, the silence struck her first. No gentle trill greeted her as it usually did. In her hiding place, only a broken tumble of rocks and stones remained. Hope dissolved as she groped through the cavern, trembling. Her tail fin thrashed as she plunged her arms into every corner. But the silence told her the box was gone. Her pupils narrowed into dangerous slits. The sea woman rode the cold current into the briny deep. She would reclaim the box and what was inside. She must. Time and tides would decide. Crick, crack, the story is put on you. The note waited on the kitchen table. Keela didn't even have to pick it up or read Pop's blocky print to know what it said. Her fingers hesitated over the paper. She and Pop hadn't gone diving or done anything normal together in months. She missed the salty mist on her face and the trampolining waves. Keela lifted the note and balled it in her fist. She took a deep breath, then shut the door of the empty house. The gravel crunched under Keela's feet as she crossed the street into the dense patch of trees. A foot-worn path wound its way between towering cabbage palms and sandbox trees. The gully sloped, and she stepped around the snaking roots of a bearded fig. Leaves rustled overhead. A monkey skittered across a bough. With a push of a branch, the forest ended. Keela looked out at the waves lapping the shore, the beach, the one place that felt like home. She walked along the water's edge, her canvas bag hanging lightly from her shoulder. When Keela was five, she found the first piece of sea glass, blue like a cloudless sky. You found a mermaid's tear, Mom had said. Let's, tr let's try to find a whole rainbow. They had found every color but orange, the rarest. Now, Keela stayed up at night, thinking about that last piece, Mom's piece. Keela peeked into her bag at what she had collected that week. Several pieces of sea glass, sharp edges worn away by water and sand. The colors rippled like the surf, translucent green, white, and a piece that glowed golden amber. Her mother had taught her to make jewelry from these gems of the sea. When something caught her eye, she tried to imagine how a person would wear it. A charm hanging from a crocheted necklace, wrapped in wire to make an anklet. She never knew exactly what she was going to make until she got started. In these broken bits of glass, trashed to some, Keela saw possibilities. The broken made beautiful. She took out a piece and held it to the sky. Green brightness spilled softly into her hands. She remembered the old island folk tale about sea glass. Could sadness really make something so beautiful? Keela? Keela turned towards the voice and her face fell. Her friend Lissy stepped out from the trees and walked to her. How'd you know where I'd be? Keela said in a low voice. Where else would you be? Lissy replied. But ever since... She paused, her eyes searching the waters if the right words would jump out like flying fish. It just seems like you always come without me now. Keela dropped the sea glass she was holding back into her bag. Lissy was right. Three months ago, they would have been on this beach together. Did I do something wrong? Lissy's brown eyes stared fixedly at Keela. No, she shifted her feet. 
I know things are hard, Lizzie said softly. I heard Gran talking with your dad. She looked down. Whatever you're feeling, we don't have to talk about it, but we can if you want to. Keela remembered the fun she and Lizzie once had together, exploring the beach, watching the sanderlings scoot along the shore. She'd pushed Lizzie's friendship away, and like diving with Pop, she'd missed that too. All right, Keela said. Lizzie squeezed Keela's hand and pulled a bag out of her own pocket. Did you find any sea glass yet? Some, Keela said with a slight smile, but there's not much here. Let's head up the beach then, Lizzie said. The shore snaked before them and the girls followed the tide line, raking the sand with their feet as they looked for treasure. A heart-shaped pebble was the first to disappear into Keela's canvas bag. Small pieces of driftwood, sea beans, a couple of pieces of sea glass went into the salty folds. She didn't collect shells. Pop had explained how important shells were when she was little. They prevented beach erosion, provided homes and hiding places for animals, and were even food for creatures that lived in the sand. If you want to keep St. Rita beautiful, he had said, leave them where you find them. But sea glass, that was just the sea returning what people had thrown away. From the inside cover. Keela used to see beauty in the sea glass she collected with her mother on the Caribbean island of St. Rita. But since her mother's death, Keela has felt every bit as broken as the glass that is known as mermaid's tears. When Keela and her friend Lissy stumble across an ancient looking comb in a coral cave, Keela knows that she should leave it alone. And yet, with everything she has lost, and the strange pull she feels from the comb, she can't help but bring it home with her. Far away, deep in the cold ocean, the mermaid Ophidia can feel that her comb has been taken. Despite her hatred of all humans, her magic requires that she make a bargain, the comb in exchange for a wish. Keela knows that what she wants most in her heart is for her mother to be alive. There's a lot more to mermaids than Little Mer Disney's Little Mermaid, which was based on an 1837 story by Hans Christian Andersen. We have dozens of books about mermaids here at the library. I'll leave you with a slide of some that are really good. Check out the rest of our YouTube programming and our in-person programming. On June 11th, we're having a Wimpy Kid Day. See you later from the Oosterhout Free Library.